We are going to get things rolling today and look at physical education with purpose and becoming a quality physical educator. Before we do get started with today's session, I do want to acknowledge and thank the Coast Salish people upon whose traditional territory I reside. I express my gratitude to the KC, the Kwantlen and the Stolo Nations. I pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and value the opportunity to learn, live and share educational experiences from this traditional territory. So for those people that don't know who I am, if you are, if you've stumbled into this webinar somehow, or you're on the Facebook live and you're watching this and you're wondering who is this person talking to me right now, my name is Nathan Horn. Um, I am a physical educator originally from Australia, but currently living in Canada. I do have experience um, in a variety of different settings and schools and countries. I've taught in Australia, the United Kingdom, Cambodia, Italy, Singapore, and Canada. And currently, I am the physical and health education department head at Meadowridge School, and I teach MYP middle years physical education. This year, I'm moving up from the primary years program where I've been teaching uh, primary years for the last uh, four years at this school and uh, ten, the last 10 years overall. Um, but I'm making the move into middle school this year, and I'm really excited to be a part of the MYP. I recently completed my Master of Physical Education degree through Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador. And probably if you found this webinar, you found it through either iPhysEd.com um, or the PhysEd Library, which are the two websites that, uh, that I run, um, as well as the PhysEd Cast podcast. So that's a little bit about me, um, but let's dive in and uh, teach you guys or let you guys start to discover what it takes to become a quality physical educator. Before we do get started, I do want some feedback from you. So if you are watching this live right now, or if you're watching on replay, you can comment below. But for those people that are watching live, if you could just type in the chat box, what is the purpose of physical education? Why, why do we do physical education? What is the purpose of physical education to you? So I'm going to give you a minute or so, a couple of minutes, just to type into the chat box what you believe the purpose of physical education is. All righty, let's see if we can get some uh, some answers here. I see some people typing away. So what is the purpose of physical education? All right, so it gives students an outlet, an opportunity to build a love of movement and wellness. For sure, Colin, I love that idea. Help students develop competence and confidence to participate in lifelong activities. Yes, I love the confidence piece, Laurel. For sure, that's really important. Don't be shy to, to type your answers. Jimmy, learning about movement through movement. Yes, I love it. In, through, and about movement for sure is uh, definitely one of the key ideas behind physical education. Learning in movement, about movement, through movement. for learning opportunities in areas such as uh, movement that will support health and enjoyment as one grows. Also make the connection between physical activity, emotional, social, mental well-being. Renee, great ideas. Natalie, teaching children the benefit of movement and life skills to keep them healthy for a lifetime. And just uh, another 30 seconds for anyone who wants to uh, contribute to the discussion in the chat box, the purpose of physical education. Help them to learn that fun never stops. You're correct. The fun never ends in physical education. We'll talk a little bit about fun as we go through this webinar. What I, what I believe fun to be in a physical education setting. All righty. So some really fantastic uh, answers there. Thank you so much for those people that uh, that reached out. Collins just added uh, building a toolbox for adulthood, adulthood to be active and well. Yeah. And 
Martine to instill the benefits of physical activity for lifelong enjoyment. So some some common themes coming through there. What I want to share with you is uh, a couple of ideas around what I think the purpose of physical education is. And then from there, we'll dive in how to actually become a quality physical educator, someone who can deliver on that purpose. So I love this quote and I share this quote in nearly all of my presentations and workshops that I do with with teachers um, because I think it's such a powerful one. And if you haven't listened to, uh, there was a podcast put out by uh, Andy Vasley, a good friend of mine, with David Kirk um, from the University of Strathclyde. I highly recommend that you listen to it. But the quote is, the practice of physical education has focused primarily on the transmission of decontextualized sports techniques to large classes of children who possess a range of interests and abilities where learning rarely moves beyond introductory levels. So this is what we see when we think of maybe traditional PE, that often what's happening is we have a large group of kids and we are asking them to replicate, replicate our skills. We are um, just giving them skill techniques in a decontextualized situation. We're not asking them to make decisions. We're just asking them to follow. And we know that kids don't all like the same thing. And often what we're doing is we have our, our unit plans and our years laid out and we're doing the same units year in, year, year out. And when that happens, kids become disinterested and we know that learning doesn't move beyond introductory levels in these settings. So trying to get away from that traditional form of, of physical education to a more quality physical education experience. So the big question I think that we all want to really ask ourselves and try to answer through this webinar today is how can we make physical education more purposeful? I think this is also a really powerful quote and one that uh, I've been going back to for a number of years anytime that I need to advocate for physical education and the importance of physical education. If you haven't seen the document put out by UNESCO, the Quality Physical Education Guidelines document, I, I recommend that you check that out. Um, but this quote comes from the Declaration of Berlin in 2013. And it says, Physical education is the most effective means of providing all children and youth with the skills, attitudes, values, knowledge, and understanding for lifelong participation in society. And what I love about this quote is that it gives so much purpose and so much advocacy to physical education because it's not talking about physical education being something that's going to create high-class athletes or create, um, you know, sports stars. What it's talking about is creating good human beings, that physical education is the most effective means of making good citizens in society that have the skills, the attitudes, and the values, and the knowledge and understanding to be participants in their communities. So this this really, I think, flips the idea that, that phys ed has to be something that's developing sports and sports skills into something that says, you know, phys ed is the most effective means of creating good human beings. So this quote, I think if you can keep this in the forefront, if you can keep this in your toolbox of things when people are saying, well, you're just a PE teacher, you're just a gym teacher, you're just someone that rolls out a ball and plays with kids or takes my kids out of the classroom and gives me a break or gives me some planning time. No, no, the quality physical education guidelines put out by UNESCO, the United Nations, say that physical education is the most effective means for creating people that are able to participate in society with, you know, good attitudes, good values, and all the knowledge and understanding that they need to be able to be successful. Now, these guidelines go a little bit further because we know that physical education traditionally sometimes gets confused with physical activity and sport, and, and especially throughout this pandemic that we've been going through, where Often, you know, physical education was now seen as physical activity. And a lot of what was being done online was physical activity, but it's not necessarily physical education. So the quality physical education guidelines really define what these things are. So it talks about physical activity being any bodily movement that uses energy. And it's in addition to physical education and sport. And it can encompass things like active play, routine, habitual activities, such as walking and cycling, as well as housework and gardening. So when we're talking about physical activity, we're talking about just any bodily movement that uses energy. Now, we know that in physical education, a large part of what we do is physical activity. But for physical education to be a quality physical education experience, we, it needs to be more than that. It needs to be more than just moving our body. 
And it also needs to be more than just sport. So sport is any form of physical activity that can contribute to physical fitness, mental well-being, and social interaction. Things like play, recreational sports, organized sports, casual or competitive sport, and indigenous sports and games. So we have these definitions now. This is a lot of what we do in physical education. It's, it's the what we do, but it's not what we are or what we can be in a quality physical education setting. The quality physical education guidelines put out by UNESCO say that quality physical education is the planned, progressive, inclusive learning experience that forms part of the curriculum in early years, primary and secondary education. So all areas of education. Quality physical education acts as the foundation for a lifelong engagement in physical activity and sport. The learning experience offered to children and young people through physical education should be developmentally appropriate, and that'll help them acquire not only psychomotor skills, but cognitive understanding, social emotional skills, so that they're able to lead a physically active life. So it's not just moving our body and playing sports. It needs to be planned. It needs to be progressive. It needs to be inclusive. It needs to be developmentally appropriate and cover not only skills, but understanding, knowledge as well. And if we can do that, then we are going some way to helping our students lead a physically active life and be active contributors to their, to their community. Now, there's another term that you've probably heard when talking about the purpose of physical education or what quality physical education is or the outcome of physical education, and that's physical literacy. So the quality physical education guidelines put out by UNESCO state that physical literacy is the foundation of physical education. It's not a program. So, you, so while you may see people saying we're doing a physical literacy program or a physical literacy um, camp or a physical literacy this or a physical literacy that, it's not a program. It's an outcome. So everything we do in physical education is leading to students developing their physical literacy. So physical literacy being that outcome or that foundation of any structured physical education provision, it's achieved more readily if the learners encounter a range of age and stage appropriate opportunities. So again, like the previous slide talked about that idea of, you know, making it developmentally appropriate, making sure that there's the appropriate level of challenge for the students. And if we can do that, then quality physical education should enable students to become more physically literate. So I think it's important to, to really define those terms, you know, physical activity in sport, things that we do, quality physical education, this is what it is. And if we can have a quality physical education experience, then that can help us to enable children and young people to develop their phys physical literacy further. So I'm really lucky that living in Canada, um, that uh, this document was put out. Now, it was actually put out before I, I moved to Canada, but I was so happy knowing that I was moving to Canada that this document existed. So the, the Canadian Physical Literacy Consensus Statement was put out by a number of different stakeholders in the, you know, sport, physical activity, recreation, um, and, and education sectors. And what it did was it created a consensus statement. Uh, it created a... a a set of guidelines that everybody who deals with that sector was able to say, hey, we agree with this, and this is how we're going to move forward with our programming. And so what it did is it, it talked about physical literacy being that outcome of a physical education program containing four essential elements, motivation and confidence, physical competence, knowledge and understanding, and engagement in physical literacy for life. So if we look at that definition of physical literacy, which has been um, proposed by the International Physical Literacy Association and then adopted by the Canadian Physical Literacy Consensus Statement, is that physical literacy is the motivation, the confidence, the physical competence, knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. So if we go back to the start of this webinar where I asked you what is the purpose of physical education, a lot of what is in this quote or this uh, definition from the International Physical Literacy Association are the things that you were telling me. So it's not a new concept, but having this definition and having a consensus statement and valuing this purpose can start helping us as physical educators to develop our physical education programs in a way that, uh, that can help promote the types of physical education experiences that, that we want.
Now, before we dive further into this, I do want to show you a quick video from uh, the UNESCO guidelines, which uh, talks about the benefits of quality physical education. And then after the video, what we're going to do is we're going to dive deeper into each of these different uh, elements of physical literacy, and then how you as a teacher can go about making sure that everything that you do in your practice is aligned with this purpose. Thank you. 